Hello and welcome to Ode to Games. I'm Kevin Valine, joined alongside Logan Plant. How you doing, Logan? Doing great, Kevin. How about you? We're doing good. We got Zach Ross here as well. How you doing, Zach? Doing real good. All right. Hop right into it. Last week, we talked a little bit about The Great Ace Attorney. It had just come out, and Logan had played a little bit of it. Woo! But now we've had another week. Logan's played more. I have also played a little bit, so we thought we'd start off the show talking some more about that. I'll throw it to Logan for the first bit since I haven't played as much. Where are you at in the Great Ace Attorney? I have just completed the fourth case of the first game. There's, I think, five in both games. There's for sure five in the first one. So, yeah, I'm entering the last case, which if you know Ace Attorney, you know that the last case is where stuff really starts to go down and kind of all the things that they kind of so in there throughout the first four cases come to a head and yeah i'm really excited to see where where it all goes how is it stacking up it is really good i think on the ladder of ace attorney games it's it's lower um for for quite a few reasons but i i love the game but for an ace attorney i just i really really like it um i'm just Ace Attorney games are held to a higher standard, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I really like it. There's just a couple things that I have a few issues with. I think the pacing of this game is kind of rough compared to the pacing of other games. Uh, traditionally, in Ace Attorney, you go to, you investigate, you go to court, you have some big breakthrough in your court session, that the judge halts the trial and sends you back out to investigate for another day. Then you go back to court, and then in some extreme cases, you go investigate for a third time and then go back to court. But this game has more of course, more cases that are only in court. Like the the first case is first only case, in yes. court, but it's like well over two hours long. And then it has some cases where you investigate and then go into court, and then it's just over. And both sections are really, really long. And I think what kind of makes Ace Attorney feel fresh as it moves on through its runtime is that it is constantly changing what you're doing from court to investigating because the two gameplay styles are very, very different from each other. So when I'm just doing one for hours, it it honestly starts to drag a little bit, and I think the pacing is is hurt. Um, like, that first case, I think, is by far the longest first case in the entire series. And it's good. I really like it. I like where it goes, but it's just a lot of time in court, and then you have a ton of time out in the field in your next case, and it's just... I, I just think the pacing is a little bit off compared to the other games where it really keeps you going back and forth, which is why I can just binge those games. Because if you're ever getting a little bit fatigued of what you're doing, boom, it moves you on to the next thing. And that's not happening here with this one right now. Mm. Yeah, I could definitely notice in that first one that it was it was going a little long. Like there were a couple of points yeah. where I was like, oh, this is going to be it. Here's the piece of evidence that that finishes it off. And, and the person's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm guilty or whatever. <laughs> and they're like they just we keep on like nope we still got more i'm like all right all right i'll keep yeah. going uh and there was a point where it like faded or something and i thought it was gonna do like a third section because it went to a second part already and i was like yeah. oh my god is it gonna go to a third section here it didn't but there was still more to do so i was just like man all right just keep on yeah. going like i i enjoyed it a lot but it did go pretty long mm -hmm. and there's there's also something to be said for the complexity of a case i think about rise from the ashes which is the fifth case in the first game and that case is insanity and you have like five full pages of evidence at the by the end of it in your court record and there's like eight pieces a, a page so you have like 40 pieces of evidence by the end of this case and you go back and forth three times. There's three court sections, three investigation sessions. There's like 10 people you meet and cross-examine in this case. And it's just crazy. And where the case ends up at the end is so totally different than where it started at. And I think that when you have these trials, that it's like one big investigation section or and then one big court section, or in some cases, just one big court section, it limits how complex the case can get. Because there's never that point where you go back and they're like, oh, actually, the crime happened here. And then you go investigate a totally new crime scene and meet totally different people. And it changes everything and, and turns the entire case on its head. It's like there's only so much you can do to introduce these twists and turns into a case when you're constricted to the format that the cases are currently set up in. So 
also because I'm just too dang good at these games and I've, I've played them all so many times, I can just see where the cases are going. And that honestly also makes it drag just a little bit where I'm like, like an hour before the big choice is revealed, I'm like, this is what happened. And then I just have to watch as they like tiptoe their way there. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. So I think that the cases aren't as complex and like, I've never had more than like seven pieces of evidence at once. Like that mm. you just don't get that much evidence in this game. But on the flip side, a really positive thing about it is they have introduced some really, really cool new gameplay elements that kind of make up for the lack of evidence. They A lot of the gameplay is now more based on witnesses and interactions than physical evidence in your court record. So, for example, this they show this off in like the trailers and stuff, so it's it's not too big of a spoiler. I won't go that much into it. But there's a there's a new jury system in some of the trials, which is totally new. They've never had a jury before. It's always just the judge hands down all decisions. But in, in this legal system, if when all six jurors declare guilty, the trial is over, except the defense has a one shot last chance effort to get the jurors to change their minds. So basically what happens is it will be a cross examination of the jury where each juror provides a statement of what they think happened and then you have to pit jurors like up against each other if there's a contradiction within their two statements. So it's something that they've never really been able to do before because it's always like you have to present a piece of evidence to contradict the witness's statement. But now since there's six jurors, if they have a different idea of events, you can pit them against each other to prove that the trial should continue to explain whatever inconsistency that they're, they're seeing with each other. So that's a super mm -hmm. cool style of gameplay that's totally new. They bring back what they had in late Ace Attorney, the crossover where there's multiple witnesses on the stand at once, and they can have adverse reactions to stuff other witnesses say. So you have to like keep an keep an eye on the other witnesses to see how they're physically reacting to what other ones are saying. So they they spice up the gameplay with those court elements that are more witness and juror based, which yeah, it does it makes up for the the lack of investigation and the lack of evidence a lot. And if if you could combine the two and have the best of both worlds where it's like a ton of investigating, lots of evidence, and all this new witness gameplay, I think you'd have the best gameplay the series has seen so far because it's really freshening it up um, what uh, a gameplay style that's been largely the same for six main games. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the new stuff. Uh, the only thing, I guess, that they introduced in that first case is the, uh, the multiple witnesses. Well, I mean, yeah. I guess not introduced, but uh, in comparison to the first trilogy uh yeah the 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 two people on the stand which i enjoyed having both people yeah on i like that like too questioning them and and how they play off of each other but uh yeah i've also uh liked the transition to the 3d models i think the 3d i i was you know i was kind of worried that the that the emotions of the characters and that sort of thing would get lost because sometimes that happens where you go from the more like mm -hmm. hand drawn style to the 3D and you really lose a lot of emotion of the character. Um, that didn't really happen, at least on, not on the first case. I thought that they showed a lot of emotions and that they were still very expressive despite being a uh, different art style. Yeah, and that's something they definitely figured out along the way. The first game with 3D models, Dual Destinies, was definitely they all kind of looked like thumbs and were like really washed out and didn't yeah. really have much emotion. So it's come a long way and. Yeah, even though even though it's a 3DS game, I think it looks great. I've been playing it on looks my good. big big TV, and I think it looks really nice. And it's just super fun to have Ace Attorney on the big screen because I never really had that, even though like the trilogy and stuff's already on Switch. Uh, but yeah, I, I do think that's super cool. I think it looks great. Mm. So I assume you'll be done with this thing pretty soon, hopping on to the second game? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. The story... I will, the, I will say the Ace Attorney games, often how I remember them as time goes on is by their overarching narrative. And so we'll see if this one sticks the landing because it's setting up a lot of really, really cool stuff. And I'm, ex I'm excited to see what happens. And I just hope that this fifth case is one of those more classic setups where you do go back and forth and it's it feels longer and it feels bigger. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have this one done for sure by our next show. And probably be a really good way into the second one at that <laughs> point too uh the last thing i want to say is that I, I have met herlock sholmes okay and he's a freaking gem he is so funny and he's one of my favorite ace attorney characters now um they didn't really change him all that much 
from the fan translation version where he's pretty pretty controversial they did tone him down a bit but the way he's written they just pull it off so well and he's just he's hilarious but he's also really helpful at times and he introduces another new gameplay mechanic in the investigation sections where basically he will present his idea of the facts of what is happening and it will just be like really close but he'll have like a key word that's wrong that makes the entire train of thought wrong and then it's up to you to look around the crime scene and correct his deductions by like replacing the word he said with another word that makes things make more sense and there's just this really cool choreography where they're like dancing around the room together and like Herlock always like snaps and when he snaps like a spotlight appears on the witness and they like freak out and it's just like super like over the top dramatic it's it's really cool and Herlock is awesome. Excited he's a to highlight. Meet him. Is he in this? He's he's not in the first case. No, he's in he's in case two though. Case so you're about two. to meet All him. All right. Yeah. We'll meet him shortly. Yeah. Glad you're playing it, Cap. It's fun. Yeah, I was I was thinking I was gonna wait longer and play it, but I'm like, eh, I'm gonna play it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have Just it. like Zach's Thanks going well. to. Yeah, Zach, you picking up those games, huh? Uh, thinking about it, they are currently on sale, so So that means we'll... you're not gonna buy them. Like another day, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. They're on sale on the Xbox store, so I didn't expect to pick them up there. Um, hey, a sale is a sale. I did have I a question, so. though. You said that I didn't even consider this, but Phoenix Wright games have an overarching storyline. Are all the cases typically like related to the storyline, or are the cases separate and the storyline's going on in the background? Like, how yeah, prevalent is it? Yeah, it's kind of that. It's basically like yeah. the first four cases of the game set up the last case but only through, like, small moments. Sometimes, like, the case right before the last case really is significant to the last case, but most times it's, like, you're learning more about the prosecutor you're facing, and then the last case, a bunch of stuff happens specifically Mm -hmm. with the prosecutor, and they're kind of, like, a main character of the story throughout. But, no, the cases are individual, but Mm -hmm. they they just have these threads of stuff that all kind of are pointing to what's going to happen at the end. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I figured they were all just separate cases. It's really good. Yeah, you'll have to play it, Zach. Come on, get on it. One play the trilogy first, know. though. Yeah. Looking the at this, upco- the upcoming rest of the year is going to be pretty busy. I don't know if I can squeeze in all of these games. Yeah, will be a challenge. So worth it, though. But I love it. Uh, I know I was nitpicking it a little bit, but that's just in the in the headspace of Ace Attorney. Overall, it's not even close. My favorite game of the year. Like, I don't think anything's going to pass it for, <laughs> for a game of the year. Uh, I, I adore it. The writing is so funny, so good. I really love all the differences since it is taking place like late 1800s or 1900s. I love how they're like, there's so many cultural differences like once you do make it to the main setting of the game. And yeah, it's just, it's really smart how it's written to account for all the technology differences and just how they don't really know anything about the world beyond Japan. It's just super cool and it's really different and it's really fresh. Like it does feel really fresh for the series. Because the last one, Spirit of Justice, is one of my favorites. But at the end of it, I'm like, can they really keep making these like they're doing right now? And yeah, the this was a really good answer to go to this completely different time period and do something totally different. And I'm honestly just still a little bit in disbelief that this is here. I was resigned to that it was never going to come here. <laughs> That's when I imported a DS and installed the fan translation. And like two weeks later is when the leak came out. That Man, like, you were hey, so good it's at coming. that. <laughs> Yeah, but hey, if I summoned it, that's totally worth it because now a ton of people are. It's true. Yeah. All right. Do we want to hop into the little bits of news that we have this week? Yeah, quiet week. It's quiet been week quiet again. The last couple weeks. We'll start with a big delay that I think we kind of maybe anticipated. Horizon Forbidden West has been delayed to Q1 2022, if you remember. They had the state of play for this game, but then they didn't even announce a date. They just said it's still coming this year, and I think we all sat here and thought that that was pretty surprising. So this is a report that it's not coming out until Q1 next year. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've pretty much said it every time this game has come into conversation and that uh, not the non-reveal of the date at that gameplay presentation was pretty telling at the time, so this doesn't come as yeah. a shock. Um, hopefully it comes out early 2022 i'm sure it will i'm sure they just need a little bit more time but yeah this goes to show how late these effects of of COVID are pushing games um still 
because we're right now we're in the era of of delays on these on these bigger games. Yeah, I think after that that trailer and how they had this whole state of play for it and they didn't show off a date was pretty telling. Uh, and we were also getting to yeah. the point, you know, in August or, or where if they didn't say anything now, you would assume like if we didn't get another trailer na- around now with like a holiday launch, you would assume anyways that it wasn't coming out this year. Like yeah. you were basically out of time to, to show off that 2021 date anyways. So yeah, it's, uh, it's to, it was to be expected at this point. A little, you know, a little bit disappointing, but hey, nobody has a PS5 anyway, so. <laughs> 10 million people do. You mean a million. like a half a million people have it and nine and a half million are in the hands of scalpers. Have a, yeah. Sitting in someone's basement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for people that are, that are waiting on that and don't want to get the PS4 version, hey, here's a little bit of extra time to, uh, to kind of hunt one down before this one comes out. And yeah, with other stuff coming out this year, maybe it's for the best. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. For other stuff, I feel like on other consoles, because I'm thinking about it, and they don't have a big fall game. Do you know what PS5's big November release is right now? Anyone want to guess? Uh, I remember what's November? coming out. Horizon was basically it for me. Grand Theft Auto V oh, is oh my the God. big November nice. release right now. Yeah, and then other stuff coming this year still. Lost Judgment's exciting, but that's not a big mainstream thing. That's that's more niche. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's also coming out multi plat as well. Grant the thought yeah. as well, but. And then your other two biggest releases for the rest of the year are. Death Stranding Director's Cut and Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut, like from Sony themselves. That's what they're putting yeah. out this year. And then Death Loop is probably what you would call the big fall game, but. We arcane games don't sell that well, so maybe this one will, since it's really all they have this and year. Since they've been showing it off a lot, people a know lot. what it is. Yeah, but then we have a Fast and Furious Spy Racers: Rise of Shifter coming out, also, <laughs> which I, I not wonder if it's going to be as good as Crossroads. <laughs> I've been thinking about playing that. <laughs> How cheap is it on like Steam or something? Yeah, I don't know, it, but after I watched it on, on sale for like two dollars, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just interesting that they really don't have anything big this fall when Xbox has some really, really big games this fall with Forza Horizon 5 and presumably <laughs> Halo Infinite. They got, they got to show up. I mean, they're doing no the date. beta. Like, yeah. it's out. But yeah, they're yeah. going to have to say something on that pretty soon. Once we get I'm honestly fall. wondering if the campaign's going to get delayed the next year and the multiplayer is just going to come And just have the multiplayer. I can multiplayer. see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be disappointing for me because I thought that single player looked really good. I still stand by that. But they I haven't really shown off direction. anything about that, have they? Besides those like cutscenes yeah. that they've shown a couple of times. A while. I, yeah. I'm talking about before it all hit the fan in 2020, summer 2020, yeah. before they delayed yeah. When the people year. hated the way it looked. Yeah. But I thought the gameplay concepts were really cool that it's like more open and you can just drive around this Halo ring doing different objectives. I thought that was a really cool direction for it. And. I'm worried that it's not going to not back be when good. it was coming out in 2020. Yeah, remember that? I'm not sure it's coming out in 2021. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, Horizon is not a surprise. Honestly, later in the show, we're going to talk about our kind of roadmaps for the rest of the year. I don't think there was room for Horizon for me. <laughs> not I'm looking at it. Like, there's another yeah, Horizon I think I blessing that's on there. Yes. yes. Yeah, there is. But Game Pass, if it weren't for Game Pass, it certainly wouldn't be on there. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I think it probably would have been cut. So this delay doesn't hurt me too much. I just think it's kind of crazy that it's PS5's first full year and they don't have a November, a big November game for it. What did they have on PS4 in the first year? So that would be 2014. Yeah, it would. That's a good question. Because I just remember that PS, you know, I, both Xbox One and PS4 had year. pretty crap launches in terms of the games yeah. that were there yeah I'm, I'm pulling up a metacritic article that is fall 2014 game release dates wow this is taking me back disney infinity 2.0 hyrule warriors i played that <laughs> smash 3ds mm. what else came out though oh was that when uh 
Wow, not much. Sunset Overdrive came out on Xbox. Oh, okay. That is a pretty big one. They had Assassin's Creed. If that does anything for you. They had Dragon Age Inquisition, which was a pretty big release, but that was multi-platform. Also, Far Cry 4 came out that year. Little Big Planet 3 came out that fall. Watch Dogs came out on Wii U. Excuse me. <laughs> so yeah, they, they didn't have anything big exclusive either, but they did have, I feel like, bigger stuff with Far Cry and Dragon Age. Yeah, I guess so. But still not exclusive. But I feel like the Sony big exclusive train didn't really pick up until after that point. Like on the PS4, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah then it really kicked yeah, in. Because this year they've had big stuff. They've had like Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank. And... They had Returnal. They had big releases. But just nothing this fall. I'm sure they were banking on Horizon. <laughs> I don't think they were ever banking on God of War. That was a joke. They even told us it was coming out this year. That's crazy. I, that's still crazy to me that they gave that thing a date of any kind. Yeah. 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 So Horizon delayed to first quarter of 2022. will launch one week prior to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Moving on from that, Canterbury <laughs> Spirits also got a one-month delay. It's coming out on September 21st. Yeah, just extra time to polish. This game has been delayed a bunch. I really hope it's good. This is one that I've been looking forward to since they showed it off. In the PS5 reveal. Have they shown it off again after that? It no. made it into one state of play where it got a new gameplay trailer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Couldn't remember. Yeah. So it's, it's been shown off a couple of times. But this is the game made by the people who made that uh, Majora's Mask movie on YouTube that was super popular. And now they're making a game. And it looks super cool. Crazy how things go like that. I just hope the gameplay is good because if this is truly like a Zelda like like it looks like I could that could really scratch an itch that's not not being met this year <laughs> not playing Skyward Sword HD <laughs> you're not yeah no 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 there's at least one uh bigger oh. PlayStation game coming out this year that didn't get delayed yeah. out out to 2022 yeah. I I guess I have a hard time reading how big of a game it is or if I really excited for it like are other people do other people care yeah i'm sure there's some people that care it's been big enough to make it into yeah. state of plays and things like that so yeah. mm-hmm. there's and gotta be at least gorgeous. some people playing it most likely yeah. and i think anything on ps5 at this point any ps5 exclusive even though it is on ps4 also but where playstation that, exclusive where does that put it with death loop in terms of uh release date week, week later death loop oh so they both the got delayed to right around the same time so it's as, a week after as the last two bigger playstation exclusives for the year <laughs> whoops yeah. god oh, well. delays 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 i feel like that's the only Not... news that ever comes out in office is when stuff gets delayed yeah you find out that the yeah. stuff you thought was maybe coming out this year isn't but yeah yeah now more so than ever with uh with yeah covid kind of making issues for for developers over the past year and a half you're bound to have a fair amount of these more so than normal yeah yeah next up a quick update to the news we started the show with last week about all the activision blizzard allegations and controversy blizzard president jay allen brack has stepped down after the lawsuit came out and they have announced a couple of new people that will be they'll be replaced by co-leaders jen o'neill and mike yabar o'neill previously was the head of vicarious visions and uh, Yabara was from Xbox in 2019, joined Blizzard that year. So uh, also they note in this report that they are detached from the longstanding issues in the company's working practices. So some leadership change. I think this is this is good. This is some of the change we wanted to see last week. And now kind of like Kevin was saying, we'll just see if it's legit or if they're just going to brush this stuff under the rug after the PR cycle kind of runs through. Yeah, I'm hoping it's not. It's not that. I hope that... Uh... People keep hitting on this. Um, There seems to be new stuff coming out pretty consistently from Activision Blizzard, whether it be the walkouts, whether it be uh, comments made by higher ups of the company that employees are not happy with or them hiring law firms like it. It's still it's still out there. People games. Yeah, people aren't happy about it. Um, I hope this is some sort of, of meaningful change like who knows how how much change this will lead to but you know the fact that these are two people that haven't been heavily steeped in this culture for a long period of time and the fact that it's that it's co-leaders you have to you have to hope that that means something that maybe there's 
accountability on both sides if you have two people at it that uh, that one will provide some sort of accountability for the other. I do find it funny that you have these situations where um, these people seem to be complicit to things going on and they have the ability to just step down instead of being fired and you know they take it as oh you know looking at other avenues or spending time with my family they get to have these these sorts of like easy, uh, Easy withdrawals outs, yeah. from the company, which again, this is kind of the similar thing, which is disappointing that that keeps happening. But at the very least, hopefully, this leads to some sort of meaningful change. But man, you never know. Like, I I saw an article about how Blizzard was updating people on new games that were coming out, and that is my biggest concern: is that people just be like, "Oh, we got." We got the next Dia- the Diablo re- remaster remake coming out this year. Like, oh, they're going to announce this new big thing. And then people just completely forget because they've got their new games to play. Uh, hope that that's not the case, but part of me feels like that is going to happen. Zach, anything to add? No, I think we pretty much summed it up. Yeah, like Kevin said, I, I hope that this doesn't get swept under the rug. The PR cycle has lapsed, so hopefully just keep on pushing and keep on reading the stories and keeping up to date and just forget about it, I guess is the biggest thing that you can do. Just just keep uh, write, write an email to your senator. What do people do? I don't know how to help. <laughs> yeah, there's not, not really much you can do. You'd like to say that it's like vote with your wallet, but I feel like a ton of gamers will just buy these things anyways, so... Who knows how yeah. much it's going to do. And, but as and for even me, then, not really I mean, if, if layoffs, like, if you don't buy these games, layoffs happen, people, the victims get fired. Like, what's the win here? Well, <laughs> see, wait, the other thing is, problem? whether you buy them or not, Activision Blizzard are going to be laying off some people. You... <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. While their had... CEOs get raised. You had that whole news story, what, last year? About yeah. how they had record profits and laid people off anyways? I'm going to be honest, I don't... I don't think you really need to be concerned because they're going to do that anyways, which is really disgusting, but it's what they do. So if that's your concern about not buying these games, I feel like you can rest pretty easy knowing that Activision Blizzard does not care if you buy these games or not in terms of firing people. Yep. Great call. Yeah, all right, moving on, <laughs> moving on from that one. Uh, Take Two doesn't plan to on having new games for game like services. That about makes that sense yeah yeah but yeah, so I mean, this is really one of the first times i feel like we've seen a developer speak out and directly say that yeah it so. looking at it if, if you're not if you're not xbox game studios or or more of like an indie indie developer that needs to have eyes on their games i don't really see too much of a of a benefit for some of these big companies to have a day one yeah I'm- on Game Pass, really sure yeah. like the, whether it the be pricing structure works, yeah, whether it be two K, how much is the payout to get put on any of these pass versus yeah. you know those sales numbers? I'm not sure. I have to assume it's much less depending on the game. So I can get the hesitation and not wanting to be on Game Pass right away. And it's like take two. They know their games are gonna sell. Whether it's their exactly. crop of sports titles, whether it's anything in GTA or Red Dead from Rockstar. Well, they're, you know, they've got so many big games that they know are going to sell well regardless of of whether it's on Game Pass or not. And then they said that uh, that legacy titles, you know, are going in there. Grand Theft Auto has been in and out of uh, of Game Pass a couple of times. Um, Currently makes, in. I think it's the next thing coming out. Yeah, I think it's come out like at least twice. But yep. it makes sense. You got a big yep. portion of people that are going to be buying it day one regardless. And then... Maybe a year down the line or something, or a little longer, you get some of the stragglers that didn't decide to pick it up, and then you can introduce it to them on Game Pass. But I, I think that's probably the way to go for, for big developers that aren't Xbox Game Studios. Yeah. yeah. Zach's been playing Game Pass. I have. I've been playing quite a bit of Game Pass now that I got, I got my Series S in the mail shortly after last last show. So I've had a good amount of time to actually dive into game pass download like three games that filled up my series s and then <laughs> how, how big is the storage on that again uh, Five it's 500 
512, but it's Oof. not really 512 because oh, yeah, you know, there's OS the and... system and the operating system and all that stuff. So you can squeeze in Man. a little bit less than that. But uh, that's 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 still crazy. Like I know that it's the difference between you know like the regular hard drive and the solid state, but at the same time, it's kind of hilarious that it's got basically the same amount of storage that the launch consoles of 2013 had. Didn't PS4 and Xbox and One have 500 gigs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. For games now that are like a hundred gigs or more, uh, yeah. no, for a digital only but, console, woof. Yeah, the Master Chief Collection was coming in at I think hundred and forty gigs when I downloaded it. How much it, was, so was uh, Flight Simulator? Hundred and ten. Woo! So yeah. you gotta you gotta pick I, your games basically. Yeah, I had <laughs> I to delete pick and some stuff. Pretty hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a lot but, I wanted to download, but some of them had to wait until I beat some some of the bigger stuff first. <laughs> How do you like the Xbox? How do you like the machine, the controller? I love it. I love the I love the feel of it. It's smaller. The, I would, I saw yours, but I never really like looked at it. Looked at it because it was tucked in a shelf. But that thing's really tiny. Like it can fit yeah. in your hand pretty easily, um, for being a next gen console. Um, so it's nice and compact. I like the white. I like the feel of it. it feels good. Uh, it seems pretty scuff resistant. The controller I love absolutely. Uh, Xbox controllers are always pretty good, but the the analog sticks are like. Uh, concave so they, they dip in a bit which i really like and they stick out a little bit more um it's it's a nice mat it's tinier than i think the older controllers used to be a yeah, little bit a little smaller um, so it fits really well in your hands so i like that a lot um i believe logan mentioned this when he got his series s but the uh the uh, operating system the layout of the actual series s interface is a little weird the it's tiles, kind of confusing a bit jumbled the, yeah the the, the tiles are bad um uh but everything is kind of at the top so i guess you can kind of get like that. and there's some custom customizable options so you can adjust it to something that fits you better um yeah but right off the bat it's not great um yeah but i like that you can change the color and some of the some of the customizable shortcuts so there's some options to get it changed if you want um, it easier for for you because that was one of the weakest weakest parts of the series s but yeah the the hopping in and out of games the save like the just the save states all that stuff great um, game pass right away I got a chance to through the library a lot of options a lot of stuff I want to play like I said only downloaded a few things because you know I wanted to play the halos first and that was like a huge chunk of the save space and yeah. then everything else is either like an old 360 game that's like less than a gigabyte so i got a bunch of those and then i got some of the smaller newer games like spirit fair sea of thieves and then a, a couple more stuff like that and that was about all i could fit spirit fair <laughs> yeah. i forgot you could play that now yes i can play that for free now there's a couple games that i was planning to play um purchase when they were on sale but now i can just play like dragon quest uh 11 s um which, which i was planning to just probably recently because it was on sale for like 20 23 dollars so i was gonna yeah. buy that and then i saw that it was on game pass so now i don't have to do that i could just play it on series s we were playing dragon nice. quest on xbox I yeah like, that's i know any it's gonna be weird on xbox honestly it's gonna be playing a lot it's gonna be weird playing a lot of stuff on xbox like like, like even i was talking about playing phoenix right on xbox would feel weird because in my mind that's such a like a switch game so you're gonna play lost judgment on xbox i know yeah so, so it's going to be a little weird, but I mean, it's not going to be terribly weird. I like the controller, so mm -hmm. it'll be fine. Um, already used to the buttons. I remember A being on the bottom. Like, I don't know. It's just, I'm so used to going back between PlayStation and Switch that I feel like A should be on the right and X should be on the bottom. But now A is on the bottom and X is on the left. Y is on the top and B is on the right. It's weird. It's like, it's... Very similar to an PlayStation layout, but it's the same uh, letters as the Switch, <laughs> so it's a weird mixture. Yeah. It took me a little bit to, to get right. Like, Logan, I think we were playing something, and I was, like, fumbling the A's and B's <laughs> like I we always do. We were playing do. Smash, and you kept trying to pick your character, and you just... Oh, yeah, it. I kept trying to pick my character with B. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yeah. I hate that. But yeah, I do yeah. that a lot. Um, so that was, that was good. Um, but, uh... Done with news? Are we gonna get into what we've yeah. been playing? Because I've been playing a lot of a lot of games on the Series S. I've had a good a good time checking some of the games out. The first game I booted up and played was um, 
Forza Horizon 4, which also took up quite a bit of space. Yeah. Because um, like that game is absolutely... Yeah, 60, 70, something like that. But that game is absolutely gorgeous. Um, by far the best uh, racing simulator I've ever played. Um, it just keeps your attention super well. Like, the world is so beautiful in driving around. Um, it just feels really, really good. And the soundtrack is really nice. They pulled some pretty good songs mm -hmm. for this game. I mean, I've been I've been playing that a lot. Uh, one thing I, re I thought was a really nice small touch is that I didn't know you could just, like... There's a huge list of names that they voice acted, and you can just pick your name. Um, so whenever voice, like, the your, the narrator or the, your sponsor, I guess, I don't really know what her role is, but she comes in and tells you directions and tells you where the next races are and stuff like that. She actually calls you by your name. And, God, I have a pretty standard name, or else I, I would have been devastated if my name wasn't on this list. <laughs> but <laughs> but it was there. Of course it was. Um, so that was really cool. I think that's a nice personalization touch. Um, and there's these nice little customizable options, like customizing what your character looks like, which car you want, uh, your license plate, stuff like that. So nice little touches to make it more feel more like your car, your race, stuff like that. So, And then the races are, are really good. I'm really getting the hang of when to brake, when to drift, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. It feels really good. Uh, it's not terribly difficult, I don't think. I think it starts on normal difficulty, the races. So that's what I've... You can crank so them far. up to be absolutely brutal. Yeah, <laughs> they can I, get I, so I can hard. imagine. I think gradually yeah. I will I will crank them up one by one once I once I think I've gotten to that level. Um, for right now, I think normal is currently where I'm at because I'm I'm just shy of qualifying for the first season, which is the autumn season. Um, I think Logan, you're I'm done with winter. all the seasons, or you're on? No, I'm okay, in so you're yeah, you're in winter, so you're second season. Just cool. Um, yeah, but loving that so far. As soon as I added uh, Logan on uh, on Xbox as a friend, his his little uh, his username showed up in every one of my races. So his there's a there's a CPU that's got Logan's name, and it's just it's fun seeing. And he's also out in the world occasionally, so I just drive around and I see him drive by. Huh. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> the drive avatars that are like fake yeah. names people that's that's weird yeah, i think yeah i think it's actual Horizon people 3. i think it just randomly pulls usernames from different xbox users um and i think yeah. it just pulls everyone from your friends list i don't know if it's everyone who has played forza horizon but you are in every one of my races and i occasionally <laughs> see you around my friends and you list are not <laughs> you are, yeah exactly you are not good at the game <laughs> in your in my world you are actually you're getting like consistently seventh to ninth <laughs> place, and you really need to pick it up. <laughs> I'll do and, my best. <laughs> and then, other than that, um, I've started the Halo Journey um, with the Master Chief Collection. It looks great comparatively. Uh, they really upresed all the textures. Everything looks really nice. The first Halo was a real throwback for nostalgia, especially the first like four or five levels. There's only eight levels in this game. I don't remember how far I got as a kid. I don't. I never beat the game. I had no idea that the last section of the game was like a warthog chase or something like that. Yeah. Um, which were just reminded me of Far Cry 5 the whole time. It's just like a very similar oh concept. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But those, the Halo games aren't particularly long, especially some of the older ones. So it didn't take me very long. I was playing with a friend, which makes it easier to get through. Um, it is a little weird because um, in order to play local co-op, you need two controllers. Obviously, I didn't want to buy a second controller right off the bat because I didn't know how often I would be using it. Um, but we found a workaround. Luckily, Xbox, you can easily do put in a USB, Bluetooth, keyboard, and mouse. Um, so I was able to use the keyboard and mouse, and he was able to use my controller, and we were luckily able to do co-op. However, it is a little glitchy with the mouse and keyboard controls. Like, there's a lot of customizable options. Like, it's something that expects you to be able to use but for some reason um whenever a level would end and reset the sensitivity would reset itself for whatever oh, reason God. in the first halo and in the second halo it the sensitivity just resets on and off at random like it's it's really <laughs> nice. buggy so i'm i'm not having a good time with that hopefully there's a way to fix it but i haven't super looked into it yeah uh the, the keyboard mouse options have been kind of glitchy um so if you do, if you can go to controllers i would definitely recommend that but not unplayable, still having a good time. Um, Halo games are really good. I did not expect Halo 2, which I have... I started yesterday. We only played the first level, but the cutscenes 
looked like Halo 5. They remade the cutscenes for Halo 2, which I did not know. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting, like, gorgeous Halo <laughs> 5 level cutscenes for Halo 2. Yeah. <laughs> like, Master Chief's just floating through space holding onto a bomb, and it looks like a movie. <clears throat> it looks so good. Um, so I'm excited because I think Halo 2 is one of the more popular ones. So, and I remember liking the little that I did play of it. And it introduces um, dual wielding, which oh, is yeah. even glitchier. Yep. On keyboard, because oh, every time I try to invert <laughs> it, it just doesn't work. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. trying to figure that out. But yeah, Halo has been really fun so far. Um, Look at then, Zach; uh, he's just an Xbox boy now. Yeah, what he's happened? Talking about I, Halo and Forza. It's just so much Game Pass that I have to get through that it's gonna be a while. And then yeah. speaking of Xbox, uh, yesterday Logan and I started a game together um, that we have been thinking about playing for a while: uh, Sea of Thieves. Um, which is on Game Pass. We both downloaded, started it up. Um, I think it's been pretty fun so far. I don't think we've gotten into any of the new additions that they've added that made the game good. I think we're still technically in the... still. Te- we haven't played much of it, so we, didn't, we haven't gotten to the point where we're bored of where I can see how if it's just this, people would get bored after a while. Um, we're just figuring the game out for the most part right now. Um, but so far getting into it, it's been pretty good. Um, after like the first time going to get a treasure chest on an island, we like saw something off in the very far distance. We're like got distracted and we went to go find it. And it was like a really cool sunken ship that we were able to loot. And we got like a a lot of really cool loot. So Mm -hmm. I like that there's options of stuff to do and, and it's a fun game to play. And I don't know when other players come into play, but basically in this world, it's just us. So I'm not really sure how that works. Open uh, open maps or like private maps? I I think right now it's private. I'm not sure how to open it up or if at some point it just opens up. I thought I looked at my options and it was like, you're playing with all players. I was like, okay, but we didn't see anyone. All players are not there. No one else is playing, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm not sure. I really liked our first day with it. I just don't yet know what the long-term goals are going to be to keep us playing. Like, I don't know what I'm working towards, I guess. Yes. I. It's got, yeah, it's really hard to tell what our main goal is. I don't think we really have one right now. We're just doing these, like you said earlier, these rinse and repeat bounties where mm-hmm. we just go to an island on a map. We sail there. We kill some skeletons. We get the treasure chest. We go back and we turn it in. We've done that a couple times. Not sure really what else there is to do. I assume it at some point will open up to bigger and more important, like kill these ships, kill these other pirates, go other distances, set up shop somewhere else. I'm not really sure. Uh, But so far from what we have played, it's been fun. I'm I'm sure we're going to play a bit more of it. And if we can't really, if we don't really find like some way to get into a groove or find out more stuff to do then i i foresee us not playing a whole lot of it especially in the upcoming busy year so yeah we'll time see. will tell I, I did really like a lot of things about it i like that you actually have to use a map to figure out where you're going mm-hmm. there's like no yep. navigation system to just like set a waypoint and then follow it like you actually have to look at your map and mm-hmm. look at your compass to figure out where you're going and i think that's really cool because i think so often in games you spend so much time staring at the mini map instead of actually staring at like the beautiful landscape in front of you. Like I felt that way with Final Fantasy VII Remake. I felt like I was always looking in the top corner at that tiny map to see where to go instead of actually looking where Cloud was running. So I do appreciate that navigation sense of it. I also just really like the sailing. I thought it was really fun to just be on a boat with Zach and like we could just whip out these instruments that we have and just like play these sea shanties while we're on the way to the next thing. And I think it is fun to just like, it's a fun world to just hang out with your friends in. But I I need, just need to know what the long game looks like. Like, why are we doing this stuff? Like, because otherwise it can only go so far. So I'm enjoying it. I'm optimistic about it. But I think we're still in the wait and see period to know how much time we're really going to invest into this. Absolutely. And then other than that, yeah, just testing out Game Pass. I've downloaded some of the older games that I've always wanted to play, but never got a chance. Uh Fallout New Vegas, I've always wanted to play after playing Fallout 4 once it came out, so I know people really like that one, But and I own it for PS3, but I never break out my PS3, so I'm just <laughs> going to download it on Game Pass yeah. and play it. And then Banjo-Kazooie, I've always been uh, interested in, never had the chance to play that. 
Um, Kevin wants me to play Viva Pinata, so that's exciting. And then, yeah, there's plenty of games uh, in Game Pass. I'm just going to have to... It's good <laughs> that it's a bit limiting on what you can download, so I'm not overwhelmed. I'll have to actually beat stuff before I can download new stuff. So, yeah. That's good. And then... Uh, trying to think if i played anything else Sounds i think like i've just already. been preoccupied <laughs> yeah xbox series s i am loving it so far excited to play more on game pass um as time progresses but yeah that's all i've been playing how about you logan that's it for me ace attorney Plus... talk about flight simulator oh i didn't that's right i've only played for like an hour and a half but uh yeah microsoft flight simulator is now out on series s and x so i downloaded it Took up over 100 gigabytes. <laughs> had to delete so all that big. stuff. Uh, but it's nice because well, I'm not going to keep it forever. So once I delete it, I'll just feel like I'm swimming in space. Um, but yeah, I did what I think what everyone does first. Flew over my house. <laughs> that's really uh, that's really the main thing. We, we flew around Pullman where we went to college. Uh, Zach was over and then we looked at it. And like, obviously, it's like really blocky and the textures that are rough and it doesn't look exactly right. But the fact that in an actual video game, I can navigate around a town I lived in for four years and be like, oh, and there's the little pathway that leads to the apartment. Oh, and there's the corner mart and there's the stop sign. It's like, it's just crazy. It's just crazy to me that that is a thing that is real on Xbox. Um, So I flew around my hometown also. We uh, flew around the pyramids in Egypt. uh, And that's pretty much all I've done so far. But I just have all the settings. Me in Japan. Yeah, I know. I thought about it. it. I was like, I gotta go find. Crash it. Every time we went to a place, we just crashed the plane into it. I think that's that's pretty natural. (laughs) Yeah, but there's a ton of different planes you can choose. I've been picking the easiest one to fly. Flew over Billings for a while, where I lived for like less than a year, and that was weirdly nostalgic. Uh, So (laughs) yeah, it it was cool. I wish that there were even more accessibility options. Like, I wish you could rewind if you crashed because it mm-hmm. takes a long time to get to these places because I'm flying the easiest plane there is to fly, so it's really slow. It's like a single-engine, tiny... <laughs> oh, so when you crash, you have to start yard back at the, um, airport. at the airport? Yeah. Oh, okay, uh-huh. yeah. So I wish I could just rewind and get back in the air because I wanted to, like, get really close to my house, so I, like, pulled down to it, and then I, like, nicked a tree. I'm <laughs> like, well, it's over. Yeah, they so, got to have the yeah. uh, Forza Horizon feature, the re- rewind. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so that great. would be really, really nice. But no, it's super cool. I'm probably going to mess with it a little longer before I delete it. But yeah, there's some people I could see getting super into this game. So it's cool that it's on consoles and that it runs as well as it does. Yeah, so it runs, runs really well on well. Series S? Yeah, like 60 frames per second locked. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it's cool. Just right. I love Game Pass that it's like, I really just I this I've game. wanted yeah. to try Flight Simulator since it came out on PC, and now I just can. For the only thing that's annoying is I have to clear space for it, yeah. and <laughs> delete it. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Nice. Um, Evan, have you been playing anything other than the Great Ace Attorney? Any more Xenoblade? Uh, just a bit more Xenoblade, not too much. Played some more Stardew. Still working on that. Spr- getting to the end of spring year two. Still haven't gotten to a lot of the new content, but like I'm starting to see where the new content will kind of come in. So, uh, yeah, that's a good time. But yeah. other than that, not too much. Been a little bit busy the last week or so. Do we want to hop into our O2 here? Yeah. Absolutely. 2021 roadmap. Yeah. So uh, I'll preface this <laughs> so by sorry. saying I have this like scary. three games and you guys have like 40. <laughs> so oh God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go uh, through mine first. We decided to take a look at specifically games that are yet to come out this year that we plan on picking up and playing to see what's on our docket for the rest of 2021. And of course, this doesn't take into account all the games that you have that you're currently playing or any other backlog titles that you may want to get to. Uh, for me, it's it's pretty simple. There's there's some stuff that, like, one, I want to play, but is either on PC or Xbox, like uh, Forza Horizon, that I probably wouldn't pick up for a yeah. while. And then there are others that I've looked at and was like, yeah, that'd be fun to play, but I wouldn't, it's it's not a day one purchase for me. Looking at the ones that are coming out this year, the day one purchase, of course, Lost Judgment in September, Mm -hmm. like that will be day one. What am I going to pick it up on? I don't know. The PlayStation 5 grind is still absolutely horrendous. I got really close on Amazon again, did not get it. It's great times. 
Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Pokemon Shining Pearl later in the year. So much nostalgia for Sinnoh um, that, uh, that I really want to go back to. Uh, and then this one is, is a maybe, but Advanced Wars 1 and 2 do look really fun. And it's one that, you know, if there's a lull and I'm not currently playing stuff when it comes out, I can see myself picking that one up when it comes out. And then, of course, if I do end up getting a PS5, just all the stuff on PS5, whether or not that came out this year, would take up a bunch of my time. But in terms of stuff that's coming out that I need to get to this year would really be Lost Judgment and Shining Pearl. Yeah, that's it. And now you guys can go into your laundry list uh, of games here. Uh, this list is longer. They look pretty even to me. You have a lot of the same games. That's true. There's a lot of crossover. <laughs> and Logan did not put Back for Blood on his list. I put it on mine, but we are planning on playing that on Game Pass together. Our lists are the same way. The oh, same good. Way. All right. Unless I add Back for Blood. and then Should add Back longer. for Blood. That way I can go next and then you can go last. Okay, I'll add it. <laughs> all right. I won't spend a lot of time on all of these because that would take an hour but I will briefly go through my list for the rest of this year. I think it's for the most part in order, even though I threw Back for Blood on at the end because I forgot about it. Um, starting off in August on, I think, the 20th is... Uh, yeah, the 20th. So Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, uh, the Iki Island DLC. Um, shouldn't be terribly long, but that is starting off this long list of things that I really want to get to this year. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima was by far one of my favorite games of... 2020 uh went through the effort of platinuming it so definitely going to pick this up right away then moving on into no more heroes 3 which logan and i are planning to play together we played the first two together uh this franchise is a lot of fun got a lot of style uh been looking forward to this game for a while and then life is strange true colors played the first two really like them i'm definitely probably going to pick this one up close to launch <laughs> don't um, even mention the prequel the uh, the prequel yeah. what yeah, you said I played the first two, really liked them. Also, oh, the uh, did not mention before the, storm. the other game. Uh, uh, yikes. And Captain Spirit was also very good. So. Captain Spirit's great. The storm was not great. And then um, WarioWare for, so wait, what was it called? WarioWare. Get it uh, together. Get it together. Get it together. Um, Zach, come on. Never. Yeah, exactly. I have never played a WarioWare. I have always wanted to. They look like a lot of fun. A uh, big Wario guy. Um, so, definitely big Wario pick guy this or just a big up. Waluigi guy? Just a big... You see, just you see big my villains? love for Waluigi is so strong that it has, like, <laughs> spread to Wario. Because they're like <laughs> bros. <laughs> and then, possibly, maybe, potentially, Deathloop. Depend I, I don't foresee myself getting a PS5 for a while now. Um, so, as long as I can... Um, Logan's PS5 for Deathloop or figure out some other way to play this game. That's definitely going to be on my list. If not, I'll wait a year to play it on Xbox. Sure, why not? Who knows? We'll be coming out there in a year, yeah. Exactly. Timed exclusive. <laughs> and then, obviously, Lost Judgment. Probably going to play that on Series S um, since that'll be coming to that. I'm super excited to play that. Um, more excited than Kevin, probably, but that's fine. Whoa. Then, oh. <laughs> Only game he's playing this year. <laughs> and then... <laughs> We've got Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Uh, I can see myself playing a lot of this with Logan. Not sure if I'm going to buy it. Um, I might buy it, but I might just play it with Logan um, like we did the original Monkey Ball. Um, definitely going to at least play some of that this year. Forza Horizon 5 coming to Game Pass. Really loving the fourth one. Love it so much that I'm pretty confident I will be playing the fifth one. Since it's coming to Game Pass, It it would be... Would be remiss if I did not play it, um, since it will be free. Then Pokemon Shining Pearl. Um, also a huge fan of the Sinnoh age of Pokemon, so definitely excited for these remakes. Hello Infinite, maybe? <laughs> Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> is it, it coming out this year? I don't know. Year? Who knows? We'll try to get through the, the multitude of Halos um, before that comes out, if that comes out. Then I threw in Back for Blood. Um... Slogan and I might play this year. I'm interested in playing it. It's coming to Game Pass, so I, I yep. might as well just play it there. Um, I, I foresee us playing a little bit of it. I, I don't know if we'll get crazy attached to it, um, but I definitely at least want to try it out since I did enjoy the Left 4 Deads. 
Then last thing on my list, I put Imposter Factory, which is the sequel to Finding Paradise, which is the sequel to, oh, to The Moon. is that coming out this year? I it's feel like I have supposed to. It's been delayed a couple times. I feel like I haven't um, seen anything about it. Like, has there yeah, been it, a new trailer or anything? There, there's occasionally pictures released, okay. but n- not really any trailers. It's supposed to come out this year. I'm not holding my breath, but if it does, I'm probably going to play it right Good away. Good games. I'd play it. Absolutely. And I think that should do it for my roadmap of just games coming out this year. There's still other stuff that came out prior to this year that I would very much like to play, so I'm not sure when I'll fit any of those into my schedule once uh, once the 20th rolls around. But hey, who knows? Maybe I'll just spend the entire rest of the year playing video games. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, Logan, you gonna run through the same list again? <laughs> What's yeah, I'm gonna, I gotta try and think of something unique to say for each one. <laughs> yes. Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut. I'm upset that I have to pay thirty dollars for the PS5 upgrade. Yeah, but you get go. you get the uh, the lip sync. <laughs> I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> I play in English now because uh, of that. Uh, then seven days later, oof. No More Heroes three. I'm honestly a little worried about it because I feel like we've seen nothing about this game for a very long time, and now it's just coming out. Yeah, I think it's gonna be bad. I'm just gonna say that now. I think what? it's gonna run. I How could you say run. that? I think I'm gonna love it, but I think it's gonna run like crap. Okay, okay. that's fine. Yeah. I can li- I can live with that. <laughs> that's fine by me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then uh, WarioWare, get it together. God, I love the WarioWare games, and this is the first one with co-op. Like you can play two people at the same time. Which is going to be super cool. Same day, Life is Strange, True Colors. Eh, I'm Same day. Excited. Yeah, I, if I wasn't playing this with my sister, I probably wouldn't be on the list for this year. I'd probably push it, but yeah. Uh, Cana Bridge of Spirits on the 21st now. 11 days later. God. <laughs> I don't go more than, on this list, like 17 weeks. days is the biggest oh, gap between geez. releases. Oh my god. Uh, very excited for Cana Bridge of Spirits, but I think that I'll be able to rip through that one pretty fast. I don't think it's going to be super long. Then uh, Lost Judgment. Very excited for that. I'm going to play it on It's probably going to be pretty long. Probably going to be very long. Yeah. Uh, then, two weeks later, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. One and a half weeks Same later. Studio. On the fifth. <laughs> Same studio. Same studio. That is true. <laughs> uh, yeah, just super concerned about this game. Uh, I saw that the Jet Set Radio guy is in it today. That was the latest what? announcement. Really? He's in it, or is he one of the, like, He's the, in the DLC things? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But also Sonic ball. and Tails are supposedly in it, too. Yeah, you could be a, so you could be a Dreamcast. Be a Dreamcast. More money. <laughs> yep. So, Banana Mania, I have no idea what I'm going to think of that game. Uh, yeah, or how much I'm actually going to play it, because I played two to death, and it's just not going to be as good. So, we'll see. Then, three days later, Metroid <laughs> Dread comes out. How's uh, Metroid, the year of Metroid going? Is it? I haven't really been playing anything lately. Huh. Like besides not history, good. I just have not had that much time for anything. So we'll Are see. Are you still planning to play through the games? Yeah, I want to. Out. So maybe, so maybe Dread will get pushed uh, a little bit, but we'll see. You could just hit then, the highlights. You don't have to play all of them. <laughs> just hit some of the four, better ones. And they're not that long. Okay. So I feel like I should be able to, but I've already played most of two and most of Super. So I honestly, yeah, we'll okay. see. Then back for Blood four days later, coming to Game Pass. Then uh, 17 days later, Mario Party Ooh, Superstars. It's a nice gap. Can't wait for that game. Uh, it's got online multiplayer, so I'm going to play with my whole family, who's also going to get it, because we played Mario Party all the time when I was a kid. Then, uh, let's see, 10 days after that is Forza Horizon 5. 10 days after that is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. And then at some point, Halo Infinite. Oh my god. When's the best time for Halo Infinite to come out on your list? Where Between that 17-day um, gap? Year? <laughs> next well, because what? Yeah. Just, I mean, like, if it comes out December, like, that's oh, it, yeah. right? Yeah, that'd be great. It's just... Because I'm not playing... With, that would cap the list, yeah. Advanced Wars made my missing the cut list along with Sonic Colors. I mean, Sonic Colors, if we were going to play it, we'd be doing it together. And I'm, we can we can come back and play yeah. it again. It's like, do we even need to? When we run out of Sonic when, games to play. Yeah. Exactly. We still have Sonic yeah. Minecraft. So we're we're going strong. That's true. So that's yeah. it for me. My gosh. What a what a year. And I am most oh. excited out of these for probably WarioWare. I love the WarioWare games. WarioWare Gold is phenomenal. And it's about time that something's coming out on, on Switch for this series. 
Yeah. My most I I'm most excited for so excited for all of these. Lost Judgment's really up there. Deathloop's really up there. That's probably the top two. <laughs> Lots of games. I'm kind of glad that I don't have a ton uh, that I'm thinking of playing because I still got stuff that is in my backlog that I need to play. Yeah, me and Logan so, also have crazy backlogs. We're just adding to that. Yeah, because all of these games, I'm sure, will head in there because... The, Oh yeah, I don't. I don't see pl- you guys finishing every single one of these. In between, well, I, I, of them, you don't technically have to finish. Ah, you don't think true. I Super can finish Ball, Lost Royal Judgment Air. in ten days? I think I you could. Either. I don't I think you could. If Assuming you tried. that you finish all the games before it in time for Lost <laughs> Judgment to come out. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. Woo. You playing that on? Wait, no, that that's not coming on a Game Pass. So you're playing on PS5. PS5. Yeah. Which one, Lost Judgment? Yep. Because it does. Yeah, not so it's a nice mix of PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo here. Getting all three. Yeah. It's too much. I, now I just need the time. <laughs> that is yeah. that is the thing. Now that at least Ace Attorney came games. out in July. It came out very separate from all of this stuff, so I, I was able to, to just it. completely commit. Yeah, I've got a, uh, I've got 16 days before Ghost of Tsushima to go and finish Ace Attorney, which I do not think will be a problem. All right, done with the fir- uh, basically done with the first one, so yeah, yeah, in a week. All right, any final thoughts before we wrap this thing up? There's a new leak on who the last Smash character might be, and the leak says it's Phoenix Wright. So, dear God, is oh the leak my from Logan's brain. God. No, the leak is from a leaker who also leaked Pyra and Kazuya, so they've gotten the last two right. Oh my god. <laughs> so... Now, man, if, uh... <laughs> but if that, Don't if that leak didn't happen and then you would see it, but now you kind of, I mean, I'm sure now, it's I, that happens. There's so many Smash leaks, I've gotten to the point where I'm desensitized to them where I still don't think it's going to be him. Like I'm just I'm just hopeful, so I still think I'll be totally shocked. Makes like, sense I read with, all the uh, Smash leaks. There's with so the many. new game that came out, I'd be like, oh, yeah. we're pushing people to try and buy it. Yeah. But. Yeah. Please. Do no, it's it. gonna be kitty. I. He can't hit women. <laughs> they won't put him in any fighting <laughs> game. <laughs> no. That would be crazy. Zach if that already happened. got his. Uh, Zach already got Kazuya. Give me. I, I am. Songs. I would be over the moon <laughs> if Logan got Phoenix right because I'm what already very happy with the people that I've gotten. What a way to Even end if it's not or... Waluigi, I will be <laughs> happy. <laughs> Zach, anything from you? I would prefer if it's Waluigi than Phoenix right, but if it's Phoenix right, then that's fine. If It'd it were Waluigi, some killer music to Smash. Songs would be bad if it was Waluigi. Waluigi's pinball from Mario Kart. That's already in there. That's... <laughs> Dang it. They got nothing left. He's There's got no soundtrack. Yeah. It's just silence. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Waluigi. This stage would probably be Waluigi pinball. Like they do another Mario Kart stage for him or something. That'd be it's cool. a great Mario That's Kart great stage. Card. I love that stage. Track. Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't think of that word. <laughs> I was saying stage. <laughs> All right, that is going to do it for us on this week's episode of Voted Games. We're here on Thursdays or Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, other podcast streaming services that you may use. Our website, odegames.com, has the audio version of the podcast, so you can check it out there. The video version is on YouTube, Ode to Games, so you can check that out there if you want to catch the video version. We're on Twitter, Ode to Games, Twitch, Ode to Games as well. You can send an email to odegamescast at gmail.com. For Logan and Zach, I'm Kevin. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Just said next week. Uh, we will not catch you next week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that back. <laughs> um, Psych, gotcha. I'm so used to saying that every week. Um, so uh, me and Logan are gonna be busy, and Zach doesn't want to do a solo That's show. Just me. I don't think we've done a I'm solo the only show one ever. Be here. <laughs> um, so You're stuck with me. We'll be taking a week off. We don't do that very often, so. We get we, we get uh, we get days off every now Summer and then. Summer vacation. Yeah, We're taking taking vacations and stuff. So we will see you in two weeks. So two weeks from now, look forward to the next of oh, the games. Catch you guys later.